financial assessment confusion? Last week, as the first borrowers entered the financial assessment requirement, we received several reports of confusion as to the roles that loan officers and HECM counselors play in preparing the prospective borrower. Welcome to the Industry Leader Update brought to you by Reverse Focus. I'm Shannon Hicks. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? That rhetorical question came to mind when hearing various reports of loan officers who found some confusion surrounding the gathering of a prospect's financial information prior to Heckam Counseling. Now, one such loan professional is John Smaldone of Hanover Financial Services, a consulting firm in the reverse mortgage space. John joined us by a telephone in this previously recorded conversation. John, thank you for joining us. Let's uh, first start by sharing the experience that you had last week with a few of the loan officers that you consult and train. First, tell us exactly, John, what is it that you do in the reverse mortgage space, just real briefly? Okay, I've, I've been in the uh, reverse mortgage space over 17 years now, and I've, I had, have been and had my own firm in the reverse mortgage world, but uh, since 2010, I've been doing consulting. My firm, Hanover Financial services primarily consults firms that are either starting up reverse mortgage operations or those that want to expand. Now John how did you first become aware of this issue? Um, well first tell us how you first became aware of it and then also tell us exactly uh, what the issue is that you had when it came to the financial assessment and gathering information and then Heckam counseling. So uh, first how did you first become aware of this issue last week all right it actually started coming out of the gate on april 27th which everyone knows that was the effective date for the uh, financial assessment ruling the company i was or that i am uh, currently consulting with we had three loan officers that had cases that had to go into counseling so on monday they sent out their their package they were working with their clients on getting them into into counseling and and the uh, lo and behold uh, uh, the borrowers potential borrowers came back and said that we can't do counseling the counseling agency will not allow us to do the counseling unless we have a and provide the counseling agents see with a pre-assessment of their uh, before their potential meeting you know, of, of their financial assessment requirements. So the gears really came grinding to a halt then. So these were FHA case numbers, John, just to confirm, that were on or after April 27th. So therefore, they submitted these for counseling, and the counseling agency came back and said, we can't proceed unless you give us some pre-assessment information. Now I'm imagining that centered on some of the financial data of the uh, applicant. Is that correct? Yeah, actually... Um None of them had their FHA case numbers because you have to have that counseling cert and application taken before you can get your FHA case number. Exactly. Uh, now we uh, we went about things as normal as far as from a from setting up the counseling, and lo and behold, uh, these uh, agencies were under the impression that they had to have you know this pre-assessment worksheet. And the counselors were under the impression that that they uh, were to analyze them, and even to the extent of one uh, counseling agency said that you know we have the right to approve or, or disapprove based on that financial assessment worksheet. So there is a primary misunderstanding that it, it appears as to the role of one who's going to do the assessment and who's making the final determination. Um, so. When you say the worksheet, just to be clear with our folks, from the property charge guide, which is part of the financial assessment, there's a worksheet that right. outlines um, some of their total obligations, also the percentage of the property taxes as a percentage of their gross income. Is that the sheet that they were wanting to have complete and submitted prior to the counseling session? Yes. So obviously this raised a red flag, and your loan officers that you're training and consulting with are like, okay, John, what do we do? You know, we we don't gather this information at this stage. Uh, we're, we're just trying to get the counseling done. So what was the initial explanation from the HUD approved Heckam Counseling Agency? What did they, what was their first response back to you? Well, their first response is, is that we cannot go forward until you supply us the financial or pre-assessment financial assessment worksheet. Um, 
something didn't sound right, obviously, to me. It wasn't. Uh, it didn't sound logical that that they would have to have this prior to doing counseling, and they definitely didn't have the right to either approve or disapprove the client based on that financial assessment mm -hmm. worksheet. The financial worksheet, the financial assessment itself is done by the underwriter. Right. You know, it's, it's done through the gathering of documentation. It's done through submitting the worksheet. But actually, a lot of lenders do the worksheets themselves as well. So definitely, this is not a requirement. For an example, once I heard this, I was uh, pretty well, you know, pretty flabbergasted. So I started calling lenders is what I started doing. Excellent. And most of the lenders, and I'm talking about large lenders that are in the reverse mortgage space that, that many that are hearing us right now sell their loans to, and most of these lenders, in fact, all of them came back and said, I have, we have no idea what you're talking about. So they were we surprised. <laughs> they were surprised. They haven't run into it uh, as of yet because it was just too new. I mean, this happened Monday morning on the on April twenty uh, May, uh, April twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. You know, things were things were just getting on. You know, just getting rolling. Uh, one of the lenders was really working real closely with me to try and get this problem resolved, and I started to talk to, like I say, other lenders, and. Then I started, uh, but one lender was having the same problem, and the problem was down in your neck of the woods in California, where they had a, 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 a counseling agent see that was requiring the same thing. So putting two and two together, we, uh, we started working trying to get a hold of people at the office of, uh, of the housing counseling. Now their and job, they, what's, what's housing counseling's job, just for our listeners who may not be aware? Well, really, to kind of oversee, and uh, they have the rules and regulations, and you know they they oversee. They're they're a desk where lenders can go and get support, get uh, questions answered. You know, primarily right now on the Financial Assessment Act or ruling, I should say. Right. So uh, they were very helpful. I mean, they came back. Uh, uh, they came back and said, basically, counselor cannot require at this point that pre-assessment financial worksheet and approve or disapprove a borrower. However, you know, the, one of the things, and, and I think it's a good or great idea, one of the things that they suggested, and in, in fact, they were pretty emphatic about strongly urging lenders to use the pre-assessment evaluation sheet even prior to sending them the counseling. And what was the reason for that? So it sounds like they wanted them to front load it a little bit. They, what their purpose was is they felt that, you know, if a lender took the time to really analyze their prospective client as much as possible, they would, it would help them to determine in their own minds whether, you know, it was a, it was a lost cause or if it at least had, a, had an opportunity and a chance to go through. Got it. Yet, yet, remember, you know, this was a recommendation, but it still was not saying that this was required to be sent to the counseling agency. We went back, and uh, the lender I was working with uh, took the time to call the counseling agencies that, uh, that we had a problem with, uh, talk to them, show them the letters that they received from the uh, Office of Housing Counseling, and they finally came to their, I don't want to say came to their, maybe I should say, came to their senses and realized that the training that they were receiving, that they had misconceptions of what they needed and what they didn't need. So it's more of a question of maybe how they were interpreting the requirements of the financial assessment, not exactly. so much the particulars of it. Because they, uh, they had training separate from ours. They had actually training that was provided for the counselors themselves and so there uh, you know we found I don't know how many out there are under this uh, misconception but I uh, I know I sure ran into it uh, out of the gate and spent a lot of time for uh, for two or three days and I would suggest that if any you know anyone runs into this number one I would go right to their lender and start start working with their with their lending with their lender and let that, their lender get involved 
And that was my next question is, you know, what would you recommend loan officers that run into this problem do? And so they need to go to their lender and have their lender contact, I would imagine, the supervisor at the housing counseling, uh, counseling agency, excuse me, and um, get some clarification on this to make sure that there's not that misunderstanding. That would be the logical thing to do because once, you know, once the lender is assured that that's not, you know, that's not the case, you're not going to have a problem. And if you have a lender like I was working with that would actually contact the agencies, uh, that even um, that puts a frosting on the cake. Absolutely. So, well, you know, here we are fresh out of the gate with a financial assessment. And, John, thank you for sharing this with us today. I think it's important uh, for those of you watching today and, and hearing this call with John, uh, if you run into a similar issue, again, do what John said. Contact your lender immediately and have them get in touch with the counseling agency. Uh, I think, you know, the Heckham Counseling Agencies, by and large, do a very good job in educating the borrowers. And uh, they're faced with some of the similar challenges that we are with just rapid change and new regulations and protocols. So I know they're all doing their best to adjust to this latest uh, development with a financial assessment. John, thank you so much for, for sharing your uh, your experience and with the uh, loan officers and lenders that you consult with on uh, really what I think is extremely important as we step into the financial assessment. Uh, Shannon, there's one more thing I wanted to add, and I don't know if this uh, would be a help or a hindrance, but uh, having HUD you know, issue a letter, a mortgagee letter, stating you know, the requirements and stating that counselors do not are not required to have this worksheet sent to them prior to counseling. Now, you know, that may fuel the fire. Yeah, it may get, may get HUD uh, thinking, but you know, if a mortgagee letter was out like that, that would be the, the proof in the pudding. Absolutely. So some proactive steps that we can take, and it would be right. nice to see a blanket statement just to clarify this. Well, thank you once again, John, and for all of you listening, uh, just be aware and be watchful. Um, as we all uh, embark on this journey together with the financial assessment, including the Heckham Counseling Agencies. Thank you so much, John. Thank you very much, uh, Shannon. You do a great job. Thank you, sir. Take care.